tonight is very important. Sorry, I have ice in my mouth. It's a very important video. It's more or less the last one. We'll see what's the situation. I'm having alcohol before because I'm not convinced that the starter I made is really working. But I'll show you what to do if your starter is doing great or if it's not doing great. And then the next steps and how to get ready for actually making bread or whatever you want to make with your starter. Uh, remember that it's, it's still a very young starter, so it will take some time to express its capacity. Sorry, I'm, I'm just tilting this glass of spritz here. Anyway, let's, let's work on that starter. So today is a really important step, can be almost the last, definitely it's not the last for the starter that I was making because it definitely needs more time, maybe yours is ready. This is the step that should transform what we were doing in all, during all these days into an actual usable starter that we can use to make bread. Actually you can see my two working starters. <clears throat> this one is the starter that I've been using for, for a long time. It's become now a whole meal starter. You can see all the, the little bubbles and holes. This is the one I use always to make my bread. Very proud of it. And recently I've just converted part of it into a, a starter that uses um, a whiter kind of flour because I might use it for for pizza or for bagels or for sweet things like brioche or panettone pandoro or colomba pasquale and this is also it's just beautiful it's super active and actually I'm gonna put them I'm gonna put them back in the fridge because I don't want them to wake up right now and we'll work on the one we have. Basically I'm gonna try and rescue mine, but at the same time I'm gonna tell you what you should do with yours. Okay, so today for the last step we're gonna use 70 gram water and 55 grams flour. So hydration is increasing quite significantly. I'm gonna just transfer it from the jar that I've been using into the bowl. When I made the starter that I'm using now, it definitely it took yeah it took 15 days. It wasn't ready after eight days. And I I actually did this kind of steps. I hope yours looks much more active and bubbly. It smells a little bit of acidity, but not even that much. And now I'm gonna put, as usual, the water. Once again, I'm gonna try and just melt it in the water and sweeten, release all those acidic and alcoholic smelling gases. I'm gonna mix with a spoon. So after this step, if your starter has been, has been very active and it's been bubbling and growing consistently, you, you truly see that there is a lot of activity. The yeast have uh, definitely taken control of what's going on in your starter. So then you can follow one part of the instructions I'm gonna give. For those of you who are struggling a little bit with the bubbles and the uh, and, uh, fermentation 
So the instruction for, for them and for me as well, because I'm gonna keep doing it, is probably just keep doing what we've been doing uh, since now. Kind of refresh it every 24 or 48 hours in similar ways. I, I'll, I will add some details on that anyway. One thing at a time. And also this is the point in time where I'm gonna keep everything that I have in here, but from next time definitely we're gonna start to either throw away part of the starter or find ways to use it. And there are many ways. And now I'm gonna add the flower. I've increased the hydration, the percentage of water, so it should be possible to actually mix it with a spoon, with a spatula. We just need to mix it until everything is incorporated. We have a much wetter dough, which is gonna help the yeast to reproduce pretty quickly. It doesn't have the same, the same structure, obviously. It's so liquid, it doesn't have the ability to grow consistently to a, a, a sizable piece of dough. But the bubbling should happen sooner. Kind of looks like hummus. So, next step. I'm gonna put it back in the jar that we have you have a jar with an even bigger mouth. Especially because once you start making refreshments of the sourdough, you, you want to do them inside the jar directly. You don't even need to use a bowl. That's what I do normally. Once you have a started running, really a tiny quantity is basically, it's already infinite. With a tiny bit of starters and some refreshments, you get an exponential growth. And we all know what is an exponential growth right now. Okay, so the idea is now you cover it again with a, with a cloth, with a, piece of, with a piece of cloth you have, and then you leave it for a couple of hours in the kitchen as before. And then for those of you who feel confident that it's growing nicely, you can put it in the fridge. And in three days time, we can make a checkup and see if it is actually ready or not. We can make a test. So it's not, nothing is lost really. You can be brave and try to do, follow that approach. For those of you, like me actually, who are not really happy with how much it is growing and how much it is bubbling, I think I'm gonna keep it for definitely for longer outside the fridge like we did before and just follow and see what happens, see how active it is. An important thing, so you, you should keep it a couple of hours out of the fridge like this with the cloth. Before putting it in the fridge, close the jar with an actual lid. Okay, so you put it away for a couple of hours. A couple of hours will help the yeast to reactivate and start eating. After two hours, you take it back, you remove your cloth, you close it with whatever lid you have, close it tightly, and then you put it in the fridge. And then, in three days time, I will suggest, I'll probably post another video, and give you ways to test and see if it is actually usable to make bread or not. And we're done. It's possible that you already have a sourdough starter now. It's exciting. Because I'm gonna soon post a video on my classic bread making recipe. A good point about refreshing. If this is not really working and you're gonna do more refreshments every 24 hours or every 48 hours. But you don't want to keep adding water and flour to this jar. You don't need a huge quantity of this. So what you need to do is throw away part of it. Don't worry, just throw it away. And keep a specific weight. You will keep 100 grams of this. Then you will add as usual water. Let's say 70 grams water. Mix it and then add 100 grams flour hydration between 50% to 100% and it's a whole different topic we can we could discuss about 
when do you need a, a wetter sourdough starter, when do you need a stiffer one, there are all kinds of schools and theories and preferences. So if you want to keep it workable, something that you don't need to need, just put something around 70 grams water. Anyway, I've talked too much. Good luck with your starter, I'm curious to know how is it going. I'll see you all in three days time more or less well depend when you see the video anyway i'm excited to show you some good recipes for the starter bye